to my channel. Today we're looking at how to improve your efficiency within InDesign. The first thing we're looking at is how to use the gridify feature within InDesign. So if you draw a rectangle or any shape and you use the arrow keys, it adds subdivisions to create different boxes. You can press shift to keep it in proportion so that the shape will always be a one-to-one -one ratio or you can let go and it will be any dimensions you need it to be. You can also press control and the arrows and it will add more or less gutter space between the subdivisions. So if we just swap the stroke color and we select on the gap tool, you can actually move the different gutter spaces around, which is quite cool when creating mood boards. And they work quite well when you delete elements that you can still move things about. So for instance, you can see there's the entire column you can move, or it could just be the specific part within the middle. And it doesn't matter how much you move them. It could be a lot or a little, but it works well to just get the design you want to choose. You can push these grids even further by turning them into rulers, which allow you to move them about and create dynamic grid layouts. So the first thing we're going to do is add in another rectangle and repeat the process of creating a grid using the arrows. From here, we're going to just match it out to the margin size, and then we're going to use a special script inside InDesign to give us our ruler guides. So if you go to Window, Utilities, and in Scripts, if you scroll up, you should see a uh, one within the default scripts called add guides so from here we're just going to turn off the ones we don't need uh, like vertical and horizontally central positions as well as the left and right as we just need the top and bottom so if we click ok it does its thing and it creates these outlines so from here we can just delete the original shapes as they were just used to create the grid and from here you can just begin to start layering content you are able to turn them off by pressing Control and colon or you can just go to view and turn them off you're also able to snap content to the actual ruler guides themselves. The next tip we're looking at is how to fill in content boxes really easily. So if we've got images and you've got to drop them in, it's best to use the content aware tool, which is inside your preferences. This will allow you to click new images into InDesign without having to manually scale them up. So if we just drop one image in and select it, we can go to the properties panel and choose there's a new box, which is the content aware tool. We can click on that and it begins to resize the images. So now when we drag in new images, they should all follow the same process. So if we just select a bunch of different images in different uh, orientations, it should choose what the computer believes is the optimum viewing area. So for instance, this deer is a vertical portrait. So it sort of zoomed into the deer, so it's left the background out. The tiger has zoomed into the face and then the, the food is zoomed into the foreground. This is quite a cool feature if you've got to drag and drop a bunch of different images for like a mood board or something that you just need to get the general sense of an image. You're also able to remove the content grabber as that comes up and can get in the way. So if you go to view and you select the hide content grabber, when you select an image, it removes it. I don't mind it, so I'm going to put it back on. Within InDesign, it comes with its own placeholder lorem ipsum text which can be very useful when trying to create like dummy mockups for just content when you haven't got anything. But there's also a cool feature to access different languages. So when you press the fill with placeholder text, you can press control and it brings up another menu which allows you to change the language. So you can go to Russian, like Cyrillic text, or you can go to Hebrew, Arabic, or Japanese, as well as Mandarin and Chinese. I find this useful when trying to typeset or build out content within a magazine layout or design that's got foreign languages, as you can work out which fonts work well and estimate the leading and tracking without having any direct content to follow. I've mentioned dynamic spelling before, but it's still a really useful tool as it allows you to change text in a similar way you'd see in most word processors like Microsoft Word or Pages. The thing I like most about it is that it underlines text and you can add dictionaries. So if you're not very good with grammar or spelling, it will come in and assist you quite well. You are also able to add words to your own dictionary, which allows you to change how you process copy. So for instance, if your name is maybe like a different spelling or not in traditional, you can add in your name to allow InDesign to just disregard any errors with it. The other element that I find really useful is adding autocorrect. This is similar to Microsoft Word where you type out the words and if it's incorrectly spelt as you type, it changes it on the fly. But I find it's useful to create special acronyms to allow me to add repetitive text that might come up a lot. For instance, your full name or an address or something. So you can type in a few keys and it will add in a whole sentence. So for instance, if we just hit MFN, 
it will comes up with my full name test autocorrect. And you can constantly change this depending on your product. As you can see, it's got a bunch of different words that have been misspelled. However, they're not for everyone. Um, there will be words that you might misspell that will need to be manually corrected, but you can add different words into the library that will allow InDesign to recognize that those are common mistakes that you miss upon. So you can build up your own library of text errors. Hopefully these tips will improve your workflow and make you more efficient when using InDesign. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.